Uh, Enrique, thanks for coming on here on, on Nuke the Fridge. How are you doing? Very good, man. Very excited about uh, the look of this film because it takes place in space and the colors pop. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Well, uh, the most complicated thing was that the spaceship is white. So <laughs> try to give personality to the white spaceship while it, while it was not easy. So, you know, we start with the white, we go to different colors depending on different moods, you know, some red here, the blue for the nights, and little by little, we also go into darkness. So the, the colors and the lighting and the mood changes according to where the story is going, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of which, I'm very curious is like, do you take direction from the director or do you direct yourself as far as the cinematography goes or the way it looks scene to scene? Well, it's always a conversation with the director. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, and, and even in the, in the first interview to see if he's going to hire me or I want to be hired, we talked about colors and approaches and how we're going to do things. So there's always a conversation. So there's always um, a discussion. Maybe this color is better for this or maybe this color is better for that. And like the director wanted white in the walls. I didn't want them, but, you know, we went with white. <laughs> But the director wanted certain color for the night, and I felt that the other color was better. So I went with the color that, you know. So it's always a give and take. It's always a discussion. And it's always a discussion that is based on creative ideas, right? And in the script. Mm -hmm. Right. And then for, like, I got to say, there were some creepy scenes in there, man. Like, color, uh, you know, having the lighting correct for the space stuff was weird because you had, like, black on top of black. But it worked, and you could see movement in there. Um, mm -hmm. What do you, what's the biggest difference between doing something like this and something that takes place in uh, our, we're, our, our own world, our own planet? Well, the difference, of course, the difference is if we take, let's suppose to do that, we're doing something on our own planet, mm -hmm. we are dealing with nature or with architecture or with different nature. So you have to adapt yourself uh, to the different situations and try to bring the control to those situations that you need to. Uh, sometimes waiting for the light, sometimes uh, lighting yourself, your uh, house. In the case of this, this, this movie, you know, it, everything happens in one space, uh, I mean, you know, one spaceship. So um, everything is controlled. All the lighting is controlled with dimmers. So we, at a press of a button, things can change. So it is, but it's also, but when you don't have variation, it's also more, it's, it's, it's scary because when you work in a forest and then in a house and then in a warehouse, you have variations here. You only have the spaceship. So sometimes you doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to tell you right now, I think I can, it's a compliment. I felt very, very Stanley Kubrick mm -hmm. in 2001. Was that done on purpose? And if not, who are your influences? Do you have uh, um, people who inspire you in the industry doing cinematography? Well, I have many, I have so many people have cinematographers that have inspired me that we will need maybe three hours to talk about. <laughs> I got time. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are many of, you know, my, you know, amazing cinematographers all over the place from everywhere in the world. And a lot of them, very, most of, and many of them very inspiring. Uh, you mentioned Kubrick. Kubrick is impossible not to, impossible not, not, to mention Kubrick in a science fiction. You know, 2001 is one of the greatest, if not the greatest science fiction movie of all time. And, you know, the cleanliness, the white. But uh, I don't think necessarily that this movie was based on that. Yeah. But it was based on other movies that were based on that. So yeah. indirectly, we always go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you had a lot of, like, the whites and stuff. Was this, was this done digitally or was it uh, film? And is there a difference when you... Think of what color you're going to uh, scheme it with. Yeah, no, this film is definitely, definitely uh, digital. And for a movie like this, digital was the right way to go. It's more immediate. It, and film has a texture that may not have been right for this project. So, yeah, we went digitally. Mm -hmm. Have you, well, have you had a chance to see it all? I mean, because this current situation and stuff like that, maybe like in a theater, have you had a chance to give it a watch, the entire thing, final mm -hmm. edit? I have seen the movie on the big screen, not with sound or anything like that. I've seen the movie with the big screen because I did the final coloring of the movie. Right. So um, that's how I did it in the big screen. And I saw it in the big screen. And I've seen it in the, in the streaming. I've seen it in streaming. Uh, but I haven't seen it finalized with sound and everything in the big screen yet.
Uh, final question, but I'm dying to ask you this because you have a lot of work uh, that you've done, right? And this one's fantastic. Voyagers, I loved it. Uh, any any chance of 20 weeks later return? Because we want that movie. We love what you did, the look and the lighting. That movie is awesome, man. And it's a cult favorite by now, but where is it? <laughs> any news on that? Nothing you can share with us? Well, we were hoping that they were going to do another one, but they didn't. So we'll see, maybe soon. But it was a pleasure to work in the movie, and it was absolutely crazy. So it was good. Enrique, it's a pleasure to see your movies, and it's a pleasure to talk to you today, okay? Thank you so much. Thank pleasure. you. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.